Is it boring? Is it classic? Is it dated? How do you know? What are the details that let you know whether something is in style, out of style, whether it's a modern classic or it's a has-been? I'm here to tell you in today's video. there is no such thing as classic. There's no such thing as classic. There's no such thing as classic. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but classic is a myth when it comes to style. I'm going to show you why, and I'm going to break it down in today's video. So if you're new here, my name is Netta. My whole goal for this video is to help you build a wardrobe and a style that you love. So you look beautiful and you feel confident every single day. So I get asked a lot of questions about classic style, and I think that classic style can get increasingly challenging as we get older because there is this line between classic and boring or potentially dated or potentially frumpy that we're trying not to cross, right? We want to be classic and we want to also be modern. And so where do you find that intersection between modern and classic? I'm going to break it down or attempt to break it down for you in today's video. But let me back up by, by explaining what I think of when I think of classic uh, because I think that there's a misconception that classic means that your clothes are eternal, that they're timeless in the sense that they never need to be updated. And I don't believe that at all. I'm going to pop up a picture here. This was classic in 1985. Classic style in 1985. These are yuppies, you know, yuppie models, I'm sure, on the streets of New York. She's wearing a turtleneck underneath this long cardigan and a long skirt and sneakers. I mean, there are so many details in what she's wearing that very much put this in 1985. And at the same time, we're wearing many of those same pieces. But the end result is completely different. Yeah, we're still wearing sneakers with, with outfits. Um, it started back then, right? We're still wearing turtlenecks. We're still wearing like plaid scarves like the guy's wearing, like things like that. But the outfits, the end result, the way that we put them together is dramatically different. Um, here is another um, classic look from 1985. I think this might be Paulina. Separately, um, these pieces are look really quite modern. Like I, I feel like I would wear that striped bomber. I would definitely wear that skirt. The belt and the bag look cool, but like the whole way that the look is styled, the way it's put together, the whole presentation very much puts this in the 1980s. And then finally, this look with you know, I, I don't, I have no, no way to describe this, but to say, oh my goodness, like I, I think this is Stephanie. Stephanie, if somebody can remember her last name, actress from the 80s, wasn't she on Heart to Heart? It looks like her. Anyway, she's wearing this yellow cropped jacket and this black and white printed blouse and a black skirt. Now, I'm pretty sure a couple of weeks ago I shared a very similar look on this channel, but it looked completely different. It was the same, but completely different. So these were classic looks at the time. They were considered modern classics at the time. They have not held up well. They haven't held up, up well. Even the pieces that we can recognize, and we have modern versions or current versions of those pieces, they look completely different. So classic buys you five to 10 years of wear in an item. Don't ever count on almost nothing. Almost nothing lasts forever when it comes to fashion. Almost nothing. Yes, your diamonds last for a diamond is forever. A trench coat is forever. Maybe a pair of very, very simple knee high boots in brown or black leather potentially last forever, although they go in and out of the spotlight. Yeah, they can potentially last forever. Very few items fit that category. Pumps have changed, jackets have changed, shirts have changed, dresses have changed. Everything has changed because every 10 years or so, there's a major shift in, shift in the silhouette that is, is, is in style, that is considered modern. So I'm going to start by sharing, um, you know, three categories and I'm going to break it down for you as to why these categories, um, how they've evolved and what looks modern now in these categories. And then we're going to break down the difference between boring pieces and classic pieces, because the boring pieces are what take classic pieces and they make them frumpy or they make them matronly or they make them dated. So there's this spectrum, right? From like a modern classic to a dated classic, um, to a boring classic 
classic, like a ho-hum classic in the middle. And so we're trying to avoid the dated and the boring and just stick to the modern classics. And those are really going to be the pieces that you can wear for years, um, enjoy for years, and um, that aren't going to look like, oh, you bought them in 2023, but they're also not going to look like you bought them in 1983, right? We're trying to find that balance. We're trying to find that balance and I'm here to help guide you in that direction. Okay, there are five details that can take an item from boring to classic, that can take it from dated to modern. And I want to kind of break down these items as I go through three categories of clothing, okay? So the five qualities, the five characteristics you're looking for in an item that are going to determine whether it's a modern classic or whether it's dated or whether it's boring and somewhere in the middle. Um, these are those five characteristics. The first is the the cut, the silhouette, the, the shape of the item. So this is what the item looks like when it's not on a body, but then also what the item looks like when it is on a body. So we know, we know of course, that the silhouettes from the 80s, which are creeping back in, were, are dramatically different than the silhouettes of 10 years ago. So every 10 years or so, a, a major silhouette shift happens and outfits just look completely different than they did, you know, the previous generation. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is quality. So often what can be the differentiator between a modern classic and a boring classic is the quality. So a very simple piece in very ho-hum or average or mediocre quality fabric is going to look boring. But a, that same simple piece in a beautiful material is going to look much more elevated and can be a modern classic. The next thing I want to talk about is fabric. Now, I alluded to that a little bit, but we're not just talking about quality here, but we're also talking about the finish. So obviously, a sheath dress, which is a very simple dress silhouette, is going to look very different in tweed or a sweater knit or leather than it is in a very simple flat crepe material. So the, the fabric choice can, can be enough to elevate an item from a boring classic to a modern classic. Details. So details are what date. I say this all the time. Details are what date. So if if you're looking at a wrap dress with ruching on the side that that could have easily been bought, you know, ten years ago, that's going to be a dated silhouette. Whereas um, modern details are going to make a silhouette more modern or make an item more modern. So it's the details that are really going to give it away. So if you want something to be as timeless as possible, as classic as possible, you want fewer details. The fewer the details, the more likely it is to have staying power. Okay, finally, um, whether the the overall effect and the overall silhouette, the combination of all those details, the combination of fabric, of, of cut, of, you know, of silhouette, of detail looks modern or whether it looks like you can't quite place when, you know, like uh, just that, that never, never land uh, between um, boring and dated. So you want those details to look modern and that's how you're going to elevate a classic and make it a piece that you're going to reach for again and again. Okay, so I'm going to break down three categories of classic pieces. Classic pieces, because we know that even within the classic category, there is good, better, and best. So that's what we're talking about today. So we're talking about modern classes, classics versus boring classics versus way over on the other end, dated classics. So we're going to start by looking at a camel jacket, a camel blazer. Camel blazer, it, you know, it's it's one of the most ubiquitous, if you're looking at, if you're thinking about what a classic outfit's going to look like, often you're going to think of a camel blazer. So I'm going to show you an example here. This is the Shetland blazer from Talbots. Now, everything about this blazer is classic, but it's also somewhere in that in that spectrum between boring and dated and let me break it down to you and tell you why first of all it's the length of the blazer the cut of the blazer overall it's a little bit too short and a little bit too uh, fitted to be a modern classic so it doesn't look like the modern blazers that are in stores right now it looks I could have worn this in 1985, but I could have also worn this in 2015. It just doesn't look like 2023. Now you, again, we're trying to get that middle ground, right? We don't want to, it doesn't need to look like we just bought it 10 minutes ago, but we also don't want it to look like we bought it 10 years ago. And this um, is, is, is a dicey jacket. It's so classic that it's boring and borderline dated. Now this one also from um, Talbots, this is their Lux Italian stretch flannel, flannel blazer. It has a much more modern silhouette. So it's really the silhouette 
that shifted between these two blazers and took, you know, a, a camel blazer firmly into this, this, you know, decade and made it modern. So it's really the silhouette. We're looking at a, sl a, a, a little bit more of an oversized silhouette. Does it have to swallow you up? No. Does it have to be so oversized that it's unflattering? Absolutely not. I'm going to show you an example of, of one that does that middle of the road really, really well and one that doesn't. So Reese, it's a great place for modern classics. It's a great brand for modern classics. It's a little bit upscale, but this is their Ember one button blazer. This crosses that, this is that perfect modern classic. It does not look like, oh, it's only in style. It's a flash in the pan. It's only in style for a second. And it also doesn't look dated at all. This is a, a modern classic. So it's slightly oversized enough to be modern, but it's also got no other details and it's not boxy and it's not um, busy and it's not going to date quickly. So even though this is an investment blazer, actually it's really not that bad at 234, it's not going to be the type of blazer that is going to be out of style in 10 seconds. So you're looking for those pieces that are modern classics and also, you know, flattering and, and check those other boxes. So you can see the difference between the camel blazer at Talbot's that was shrunken and looked dated. And then this one from Reese, which is really nice and classic enough, but also modern. Now, to go to the other extreme of like a modern piece that is not is not classic, even though it may appear to be classic at first glance, this is a Max Mara jacket, it's about $2,000. And this is a, a, you know, this is the silhouette that we're seeing a lot of right now. It's a very long blazer, which right off the bat is problematic, but also, and there's just so much about this blazer that's 2023 and this is not a blazer that's going to age well it's not going to age like a fine wine it's going to age more like uh i don't know cheese or something and get stinky really really quickly because it's 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 so it's got so much going on it's so of the moment that it's going to date very quickly so i know this is tricky but we what we're looking for are pieces that are in the middle you don't want them too too skinny or too fitted like that Talbot's blazer, and we don't want it too oversized like the Max Mara blazer. We want something that's in the middle with minimal details. And that's what's going to create a modern classic, something that you can wear for five to 10 years. Again, not forever. If you find pieces that you can wear forever, uh, let me know because I want to find them too. That's amazing. But most pieces are going to be, you're going to get a good five to 10 years out of them. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about, because it's changed dramatically, is the white button-down shirt. Now, I've seen a lot of white button-down shirts um, shared in my Facebook group and, and just especially on Pinterest, especially on Pinterest, that are very 2010 to 2015. Now, the silhouette in a white button-down shirt has changed dramatically. Um, uh, several years ago, a white button-down shirt was fitted all the way through, like fitted in the, in the bust area, fitted through the waist, and then tucked into a pair of low-rise jeans, often with a skinny belt. We all know that silhouette. I used to have some from James Purse that had like a rib knit material on the side, like a placket of rib knit material on the side of the shirt so that it looked like it fit you perfectly, like it was stretchy on the side. So it, it gave you that, that silhouette that was in style then. White button down shirts do not look like that anymore. And they're not tucked in to low rise jeans. Um, they, they, they're just not. So they look a lot blousier. They look a lot roomier. They look a lot more oversized. And when they're tucked in, you've got a fuller shirt tucked into a mid rise or high rise jean. And it's a very different, very different silhouette. So I'm going to show you this is this shirt. This is actually from Amazon. This was the shirt silhouette, right? Like cut slim, cut kind of skinny, and then tucked into those low rise jeans. Now, not only is that silhouette, has the silhouette changed, but also when you're looking for a white button down shirt, if you're trying to avoid the boring, so dated is that is that tight shirt tucked into to, to low rise jeans. Boring is a shirt that looks like a man's shirt with no attempt whatsoever at style. Uh, this one from Amazon is that it, it looks like a man's Oxford shirt but not worn cool in the J. Crew kind of way or, um, you know, like in a modern kind of way, but just worn stiff and buttoned up. It's usually like very tailored. It fits snugly. It's buttoned all the way to the top. 
That is classic without being modern, and it's definitely boring. So that is a classic that is boring. Now, how do you take a white button-down shirt and make it interesting? I mean, it's just a white button-down shirt. How do you make it a modern classic? You elevate it by the way that you style it, by the material, and by, most of all, by the fit. So the modern classic white button-down shirt has a roomier fit. And I'm going to show you a couple of these. Um, this one is from... Treasure and Bond, I love this one, the oversized cotton shirt from uh, Treasure and Bond. This is a cool modern shirt and it's styled in a cool modern way. Now you can wear it out like that or you can wear it tucked in and a little blousey. Very cool white button down shirt. Um, this one from Faraday, the Ma Malibu cotton poplin button up shirt. Most of these are cotton poplin. Um, that's a cool, if you want something slightly less oversized than the Treasure and Bond, because that is big. Um, this is a cool relaxed, white button down shirt now notice it's just, it's relaxed and not oversized so that's the that, that's the range you're looking for from a relaxed fit to an oversized fit what you don't want is a tight fit um okay this one from nordstrom this is their classic poplin shirt this is a little bit more tailored but still has that oversized look so notice that how much more elegant and or much more modern that look looks than the fitted uh, shirt that's that's so indicative of what we were all wearing when we were wearing the bubble necklaces and the low rise jeans with all the stuff going on in the pockets, right? It just looks dated. Now I'm going to show you a couple of, of dated looks, dated white shirts that are out there right now, and then some boring ones as well. So this dated one, this is the Caslon roll tab knit shirt. First of all, it's a knit shirt. It's not a cotton, you know, it's not a cotton poplin shirt. So that looks dated on its own. And then it's got the roll tab sleeves. Like that is an example of a dated and also boring white button down shirt. Um, this Pandora non iron cotton shirt from Foxcroft. This is like the most basic and the most boring white shirt. It's the most basic and the most boring white shirt. Like you do not want a white button down shirt that is boring. You want a white button down shirt that is classic and modern and cool. Um, like this one, for example, this is, um, I believe this is J. Crew. This is their, this is their slimmer cut. So it's still relaxed, but it's slimmer than like the oversized treasure and bond one. Um, their stretch cotton poplin shirt. This is a nice modern, in between it's not oversized and really contemporary and really like of the moment like the treasure and bond one and it does not look boring and basic and dated like the foxcroft one it is firmly in the middle and those are the pieces that i'm calling modern classics and that i feel like we can have in our wardrobes for a long time to come okay the last piece i want to talk about is the sheath dress and this to me is is the worst defender because there are so many boring dresses out there and um, there's just so many boring dresses out there that uh, there's no other way to put it. Now, again, what are we looking at when we're looking at making something, taking something from boring and making it a modern classic? We're looking at the cut, right? The silhouette. We're looking at the fabric. We're looking at the details. Um, and all of these you're going to see um, examples of here. So first, let me show you a very... I'm going to start with a dated dress. This bell sleeve sheath dress from Eliza J, this is a dated dress. This is not a modern sheath dress. So, you know, the, the little bell sleeves, like everything about this dress is very five to seven years ago, right? Now let's look at just a, a boring sheath dress. This crepe sheath dress from Ann Klein, there's nothing elegant or elevated about this dress. It's just a very basic sleeveless black dress what what some people would call like a work dress right um but you can have a work dress and it can still be polished here's another very basic this is the sleeveless sheath dress also from Anne klein very very basic vince makes a version of this that is elevated slightly by the fact that the the material is beautiful but still very basic very simple very plain and very boring in my opinion so how do you elevate a sheath dress? You elevate it by the fabric, you elevate it by the cut, um, or you elevate it by the details. So I'm gonna show you. Now, obviously, a regular sheath dress is not gonna be sequined, but I want you to see both the silhouette and the fabric of the St. John sleeveless textured knit, sequin textured knit sheath dress. This dress is a sequined knit, which is incredible. Obviously, it's St. John. It's beautiful quality, but it's not just that that elevates it. Like, look at the shape of that dress. It is so much more modern. It's 
cool, it's sleek, that is a modern classic. And yes, it's expensive, but if you buy that dress, you're going to have that as a cocktail dress in your wardrobe. Honestly, I would say that might be one of those pieces that can stay in your wardrobe for the rest of your life. Don't, don't come for me if it goes out of style in five years, but it's going to be around for a while. Now this one, the Harpson sleeveless sheath dress from Lafayette 148. This dress looks elevated here because it's got a beautiful shape and a beautiful flattering silhouette. Like notice that the, the, just the couture like silhouette of this dress, but also the beautiful like tweedish material so this dress in a very simple material because it also it's also available like in black and i think navy or something um looks underwhelming but in this beautiful tweed material with the silhouette you know as 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 chic and as minimal as it is it's a beautiful chic dress now this this one from St. John has a little detail on the shoulder, but even if that detail on the shoulder wasn't there, that sleeve silhouette, that high square neck, the sleeve, that the fit, the fabric, all make this a modern and elevated sheath and a beautiful classic piece. Um, this Michael Kors, this is Michael Kors collection, like his higher end line, the cutaway kind of um, halter style of this black sheath dress makes it very, very modern and very, very cool. Um, and then this tweed sheath from St. John, I'm, I'm bringing them up again and again because they had some great sheets. Like notice the, the, the different textures of tweed in this um, dress. It's so elegant and so beautiful. So that's a modern classic that's not boring. It's a sheath dress that's not like, oh. Um, I'm gonna show you just a couple of others. This one is um, J. Crew. This is the sleeveless ribbed sweater dress. So again, it's the sweater material in this dress that's making it. Um, more modern and elevating it a little bit and keeping it from being so boring. So it's that sleeveless, plain, or short sleeve, plain, crepe, black dress with no other distinguishing details on it, nothing to, no, no interesting shape, no interesting fabric, no interesting details that really reads as a boring item as opposed to being a classic. Is it classic? Yes. Is it a, a beautiful classic? No, it's a boring classic. Um, okay, I'm going to close with this last one. This is the Amada sheath dress from Dress the Population. This um, is a little bit different than the other sheets because it, it is blousier at the top, but notice it's the cut and the fit of this um, sheath dress that makes it more interesting. So you want to look for elevated fabrics, elevated finishes, beautiful cuts, beautiful silhouettes, beautiful quality um, and beautiful details. And those are going to be the, the, the characteristics that are going to take an item from boring to classic, from boring to classic, because we want to stay in that zone where the clothes are modern, but they're also wearable for the next few years. We don't want to recycle our entire, not only is it not sustainable, for the planet, but it's not sustainable for our budgets. We don't want to recycle and, and cycle through our wardrobes year after year after year. We want to buy some pieces that we're going to be able to wear and have for a long time to come. And I think that this criteria of looking for something that is middle of the road, not too fitted, not too flowy, not too um, over the top, not too boring. Like finding that middle of the road item in a beautiful material in the best quality that you can afford with a flattering fit and a flattering silhouette, that's how you're going to assemble a wardrobe of modern classics that are gonna take you um, anywhere you wanna go in style for the next several years. So I hope that this ex explanation of boring versus classic was clear, cleared up some of your questions answer some of your questions. If I skipped something or if you still have questions, please let me know in the comments below. You know I love hearing from you guys. It means so much to me. And if you want help going through items in your own wardrobe and determining kind of like what's dated, what's boring, what's classic, where do these items fall on the scale, I would love to help you with that through my reverse closet edit and wardrobe building bootcamp. I'm going to pop up the link for that right here. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoy content like this and you'd like to see more videos like this, I'm so happy that I recently crossed that 9,000 subscriber mark and um, we're continuing to grow in this community and I'm so, so thankful for it and for all of you who've been watching. Um, don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Um, let me know if you want to see more explanations of how 
how to choose modern classics to bring into your wardrobe so that you can build a wardrobe that you love. Love you guys. I will see you soon in the next video.